Today, if there are 10 kids who are ready for advanced placement based on, advanced, based on PSAT, so PSAT is a pretty good predictor. We can say with a 60% likelihood, you'll pass the AP test. So if you are likely to pass AP math, six out of 10 Asian students will wind up taking AP math who are ready, four out of 10 whites, three out of 10 African American students, three out of 10 Latino students, and two out of 10 Native Americans. So I talked to a woman, a wonderful woman, by the way, Barbara Jenkins, who leads Orange County in Florida, African American woman. And she said to me a very interesting thing. She said, we used to base who got into AP based on teacher recommendation. And then we began using the PSAT data. Guess when more black and brown kids got into the courses? PSAT data. So when we worry, perhaps rightly, that assessment can discriminate, let's always remember there's another thing that we know, if we know anything about this country, that can discriminate more, which is adults, which is people. And that's the basic idea here. So, so the first thing we did is, which is kind of cool, is for the first time we sent letters directly to kids' homes. Because families own this information above all. Only they can get individual student information. No one else can. So families and kids saying, you've got AP potential, take it. Go for it. Just like we did with college. Then we gave lists of kids to schools, not their scores, but who had AP potential. To their, to their teachers. To, to their, their teachers and their, and their guidance counselors. And, and then you know, we can begin to measure how many of those kids with potential are actually getting in. And I will tell you what's exciting is there are eight school districts, I don't know them by heart, it's very moving to me, that every single African American who is, now, who is ready for AP is now in. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean by like, let's change stuff. Because that was hovering at 49%. And with all our wringing our hands about African-American performance in STEM and diversifying the pipeline, like we can do this. And that I think, I think we have to earn the right for assessment to continue. I differ with some on this. But what I mean by that is people hate tests. And they do with some legitimacy. The unproductive anxiety surrounding SAT sickens me. And how can we transform that test so the practice it inspires is worthy of kids and brings them to a better place and actually delivers something of value. I think you should, you know, frankly, to put it bluntly, this country does not need more tests, it needs more opportunities. And I think that's what the College Board has to seek. And my work in K-12 has caused me to realize, Jane, over time, that we've got to change our game. You know, it's not enough to say, tests give us good data on kids and helps them out. That is not enough. 